everyone it's Kathy and you're back here on my YouTube channel Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin'. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, I want to welcome you and I also want to let everyone know that I am an independent Stamping Up demonstrator located here in Gastonia, North Carolina but I can take care of your stamping needs no matter where you're at. So if you're currently not working with a demonstrator and you are interested in purchasing some Stamping Up products please reach out to me. I would absolutely love the opportunity to earn your business, become your friend, your mentor, and hopefully teach you a little something along the way. So with all that being said, today we're going to do, and I love to do these ever so often, another one sheet wonder. And I'm, I made this little diagram and I kind of made it where it's very neat, easy to read. Um, and what this means is you will take your six by six piece of paper. I'm going to show you on a regular piece of cardstock how I would go about cutting this. So here is our template and I've already cut my designer series paper. I chose three designs. I put them all together and I cut them all at one time. But I'm going to show you with this plain piece how we will mimic what this says do. So here's my paper trimmer, and this first piece, this is a 6x6, six six, so that's what we're working with. It says to cut this line at 3 and 3 fourths. So I'm going to bring this over, put it right on the 3 and 3 fourths inch line, and I'm going to slice it. Then I'm going to take this little piece, and it says to cut it at 3 and 3 fourths. So I'm going to bring it to 3 and 3 fourths. And that's a quarter inch before you get to the um, four inch line. So I'm going to cut that. And then this piece says cut at one and one eighth. So I'm going to put it in at one and one eighth. And I've got those two pieces cut. And those go right there. Now this piece right here says cut at an inch and a half and that will leave a three quarter inch piece. So I'm going to bring it over to one and a half. And that's going to give us this top area right here. And then the only thing left to do is turn this this way and cut this in half. And half of six is three. So we're going to know that we need to put this in at three inches. And cut. And these are all of our pieces that we need for our card. Now I grant you I did cut um, I'm gonna lay these over here because I will be able to use these for other things. I cut three pieces of the designer series paper and I got the rainbow and sunshine or sunshine and rainbows uh, this paper is a free pack of paper, but you only have until Monday to take advantage of this. And you can earn this free with a $50 purchase. Anything from the annual catalog or the June to, June to July, I'm sorry, January to June mini catalog. I'll get that out right in a minute. Uh, you can earn this pack of paper. And it is, so, I mean, this is just absolutely one of my favorite um, packs that I've seen in a long time and I have used and used this. So when you when you take these up you're going to see here's the three designs that I chose and you also got the back sides of those. So this can give you three cards that way. You turn this over you've got three cards this way and then you've got these three pieces which is going to give us a card we have these three pieces, which is going to give us another card. And we have these three pieces that we can make another card out of. And another three pieces. So let's figure out how many cards we can get out of this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards from one um, pack, one. I'm sorry, three <laughs> sheets of six by six designer series paper. Now, yes, we're going to add some other stuff to it. I've got a piece of me um, melon, is this melon, mango melody. I'm sorry, I'll get it right in a minute. I'm just not on today, y'all. Are y'all feeling it? <laughs> I also have a scrap piece of flirty flamingo. 
And I want to show you, look how pretty that's going to pair up on that. And I want to do just that. I want to cut some pieces. Now we know that this piece is um, one and a half inches by three and three fourths. So I'm going to cut one and a half, let's see, one and three fourths because I want it to be a quarter inch larger. So one and three fourths. And then I'm going to cut it at four inches this way. And this is going to give me a beautiful mat for that strip right there. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. I love that pink and white on this um, Mango Melody. Isn't that beautiful? So we'll center that up and we'll glue that one down. Um, I also want to do a piece on this. And this the Mango mel Melody match it. The Mango... <laughs> Oh, I'm telling y'all, Mango Melody. I will get that right eventually. Oh my goodness. I'm going to cut another strip of that, same size, and we're going to put this piece on there. Something like that. And then we're also going to take another piece, and we are going to cut another strip of this at 1 and 3 fourths. four and then we're going to match this up on here just like that isn't that pretty I love the way that looks so I got another piece of white cardstock and we had the, the little pieces that we cut off of a while ago that's not quite big enough Let's grab this one because we need this one to be three and three quarters. So we need this to be four. Let's see, four this way. And then we're going to cut strips off of here that are one inch. So I'm going to need three that are one inch and I'm going to do these in white. So one, two, and three. And now we have the pieces that will match up with these pieces. And I'm going to use that side of these. I love those colors and I think they'll look beautiful on the white because each one of those has some white in it. Now these three, I'm going to use the mango, the flirty flamingo. So I know these are one and one eighth, so I need them to be one and one quarter by, and you know I didn't measure the, the depth of this, so I'm going to grab my ruler and we're going to measure they're two inches so we're going to go by two and one fourth so we're going to do them one and a quarter by let's see one and a quarter what did i say they were you know this is bad two and a quarter so we're going to make them two and a half I'm just giving myself that extra little um, quarter of an inch more than what my actual designer series paper is. And then we can put these on here just like this. And did I cut three? No, that's two. I need one more. Okay, one and a half. Ah, oh, one and a quarter. Oh my goodness. One and a quarter by 
two and a half. All right, that gives us the three that we need for that. Just like so. So now we have those matted, these are matted, and we still have three more here. One, two, three, and I'm gonna do white for those. So let's grab another scrap of white. Let's see if this will work. Yep, that will work. So I am gonna cut this one at one and a quarter. One and one fourth. And one and a fourth. And one and one fourth. That worked out perfect. So there's our three pieces, but they do need to be cut down. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna put all three of these in here together and I'm gonna cut them down to two and a half. And that paper trimmer, this, this paper trimmer is awesome. It did it without any problems whatsoever. So now we can frame these on here. That still looks a little wonky, doesn't it? This looks like it needs about an eighth of an inch more off. Okay, that one's good. Same thing here. I don't know how I got that off, but I, somehow I did. So about an eighth of an inch. And then that one can go there. And then this one, and again, same thing, about an eighth of an inch. Just like that. So now I have those pieces prepped. Now we need to look at these. Now these I'm going to cut regular card base. Um, uh, let's see, these are three by three and three quarters. So what I think I want to do, sorry about that, I should have silenced my phone. Um, what I want to do now is I want to cut my mats that I want to use for these. So I'm going to go through and decide. I know I want the crushed curry for that. So I'm going to do a regular size mat that is going to measure, let's see, this is five. Oh, I'm going to need, let's do it five since this is five. Okay, we're going to do five by four and a quarter, or how about four? Five by four. I think that would be a good focal point on our card. So I'm going to cut one of those. I'm going to do one in pool party. So we're going to go four. That one is four, and we're going to cut it off at five. And that's going to be that one. And then we need one more that is the Flirty Flamingo. So I'm going to grab a scrap. That's not quite big enough. Okay. And this is not quite .5. That's okay. We're going to go with it. We're going to cut this off at 4.
So that's going to give us mats for three of these. So that's going to be the mats for this one, this one, and this one. And now we need mats for this one, this one, and this one. Again, I want to do white mats with this, so I am going to grab scraps and we are going to go to, let's see, let's go four. This is going to go on here, and then we need to do one more, and this is going to be four. And this is a good way to use up scraps, so that one can go like that. And then we have this last one. And I think I'm going to use it like that. That way I don't have to cut it and we can just put it in at an angle like that. All right, we're done with our cutting. So I'm going to grab up any of my scraps over here that's worth keeping. And I like to do that as I, as I go. And then I can throw, throw away any of this little stuff that's just not worth hanging on to. So we're going to move those over there and put this in the trash. And now we're ready to get some card bases. So I'm going to go over to my box of card bases and I know that I want to grab some white card bases. Um, One, two, maybe three. Let's see, do we have a pool party? No, we're gonna need to cut some, um, some balmy blue on a Bermuda Bay. I don't think I want either of those. So I'm just gonna sit those back over and I'm gonna grab some cardstock and we are going to cut, well I'll tell you what, let's just go ahead and work with what we got first and then I'll grab the other ones. I have a landscape and a portrait. And you know what, these will open either way. So let's go ahead and pull these pieces over first. I'm going to stack these just like they go. Let's see, these go over here. These go here and let's bring these over here all right the mango melody is going to be my first one and I think I want this to be a card that goes in this direction so the first thing I want to do is I just want to put down my designer series paper and again if you wanted to go a little cattywankas you could go like that if you wanted a larger margin down here, you could cut this off so it matches the side. And I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to take off maybe about an eighth of an inch. We can put this on here like this, and I'm going to grab my stamping seal. Now, I was going to do, um, I didn't know I needed to know that video on this stamping seal because I have had some people to complain about it tearing their cardstock. Okay, I too have had that problem, but I want to show you real quick if I watch me not be able to get it to tear. This is the Stamp and Seal Plus. The first thing you want to do when you're using this is you want to hold it like this. The other thing that will help is if you grab your silicone craft sheet. I'm hoping I'm getting a clean one. Yeah, this one looks fairly good. And what you want to do. 
this one doesn't have a direction so it doesn't matter you want to firmly put your finger there's a little grip place right here you want to grab a hold of this I like to grab have use these places here for my fingers grab my thumb right there and my finger there get a really good hold on it and then put it down on your paper now you don't you don't have to pull this really tight but start off of the edge of your paper and when you get to the end curl your wrist up like that that assures that your seal is back to the edge of your roller and if it's hanging off like that just roll it back on top of itself just like you would for um, the um, tear and tape or any type of two-sided tape again grip it come off of the edge and see that's starting to tear it if it does that come back up don't pull it watch for that if it does that then don't pull it just come up off of it and then come back on top of that tape and then you can put your finger over it and pull it down just like that same thing again you see it's starting to pull it but I'm going to use my fingernail hold it down and pull it down to the bottom this will work good for you every time and all you have to do now is just make sure nothing is hanging off of the edge of your paper bring your piece back in now I do like to use my grid to help me get things centered up straight I think it helps tremendously when you're putting a card a smaller piece on a larger piece so I am going to look to get this centered, centered, and centered. Now that piece is hanging off, so I'll make sure it's stuck under. And that looks fairly good. So now I'm going to turn this over and we're going to do this again. We are going to see it tore my, it tore my paper, so I'm going to go back, let it come back off of it. Then I'm going to roll my tape up till I feel sticky again and this this is a, um, a it's this adhesive is just that strong it can tear your paper I come back up over top of where it tore and just do that to make sure it sticks that down really well and if you want to you can come right here beside of it and put a piece down and sometimes I think it does that because we press too hard you don't need to be overly forceful but again if you use your silicone craft mat you can start up here and when you get to there if you notice that it's pulling your paper come back off of it come back on top of that tape hold that down with your finger and there you go again we're going to do the same thing I didn't get quite enough up there so I'm just going to go crossways. I'm going to turn my piece over, roll back any of that tape that might be hanging off the edges, bring my card in, and again I'm just going to sit this down something like this. Now this one's ready to do a sentiment but we're going to go through and do all of our cards and then we'll come back and do our sentiments on them. Now remember, if the Stampin' Seal is not your cup of tea, you can always use a liquid adhesive. Totally up to you. On, the, on any of the Designer Series paper, I prefer using the um, Stampin' Seal because it allows me to get a little bit more control. Now this one I think... No, this one I want it to go straight down like that as well. So I'm going to bring my sheet back over this time I'm going to go very easy I'm not pressing I'm just going very easy and I think that that might be the trick is just go very easy um, you don't have to press really hard you just need to have control of your um, of your tape so that one's ready and this is going to go on here and we're going to do this in landscape as well so I'm going to do the same thing we're going to try this really easy and that works and it did not tear my cardstock more apt to tear cardstock than um, 
but I'm just using a very gentle touch with it. And I think I may have discovered how to not allow that to happen, just with a very fine touch. Okay, that one's ready. So now let's do our last one. And this one, I do want to do it angled. So I want this piece to go on here, and I'm going to angle it like that, just for a little interest. Looks like something's on that side of the cardstock, so we're going to turn that over. And I'm going to turn this over, and again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go with a very easy touch. Just always make sure that your tape is to the end of your roll, and by bending your wrist back like that when you come up, that will ensure that it's always there. Now again, that is definitely the secret. Do not press so hard. Pressing hard is going to cause it to stick too tight to the paper and it's going to it's going to rip it. I'm glad that I, you know, did this because this was something that was a concern of mine as well as some of my girls and uh, I've had customers that's asked me the same question. How do you keep it from tearing your paper? So now we know it's a light touch. So come in, raise all the way up, come in, all the way up, and come in, and all the way up. Not hard, but very easy. And now we're going to put this on just like this. Press it down. That's three cards done. So now I want to grab another um, I'm going to go with white again because I think I want white for this next one. I'm going to leave these over here because we might grab some more of those. The white ones, I know I want to use colored cardstock for my bases, but for this, I'm going to turn that over and I'm going to put stamp and seal here, here, and here. And just remember, you do not have to press super hard, just a little, just a tiny bit of pressure. And I say practice with it. That is the biggest thing. Just practice with it. You will end up getting the feel of how you, how much pressure you need to put on it. And then it will not be an issue at all. So we're going to come across here. Make sure it's all the way out to the edge. Easy. Easy. And easy. Just like that. And then I am going to stick this on here. Just like that. Isn't that pretty? And then we got one more, and that's this piece. And again, we're going to make sure we're to the edge. And easy. And try to always remember to flip your wrist up when you get to the end. Like I said, it's a bit of a learning curve with the stamp and seal, but it is a super strong adhesive. It is not going to come loose like some glues will. Uh, it's not going to react to humidity as bad as maybe glues will. And if you live in the south, um, in a very humid climate, I think that is super important. And I know for me, I'm here in North Carolina, and in the summer it gets extremely hot. Of course, I have an air-conditioned home, so I do consider myself well blessed. Now, what I'm going to do with these pieces is I want to place them on here, and I want to decide. I think I'm going to put my rainbows in the middle, and I want to see how these are going to fit on here. And they look like they're going to fit pretty tight. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down the two on each end first. So again, I'm going to bring my stamp and seal. 
and we're working on the cardstock this time. So this is a new test. I didn't tear it. It didn't tear. And it didn't tear. So that is definitely the ticket. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on giving myself about an eighth of an inch border on to the left. Press it down. Then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I am going to put my adhesive on. Adhesive. And adhesive. I'm going to curl anything back that might be hanging off. And I'm going to turn it around because I can work better uh, this direction because I'm so right-handed and I am going to give myself about that same eighth of an inch press it down and now we have this one that's going to go tuck right here in the center and it's going to fit more flush but that's exactly what I wanted so I am going to put my adhesive adhesive And, oops, adhesive. Making sure that I'm watching that orientation. I wouldn't want my rainbows upside down. So then I'm just going to sit that right in between those two and sit it down and press it. There we go with our third card. So, no, was that third? Nope, I think that was one, two, Three, our fourth card. All right, now we have these pieces. Now this one, we're definitely going to want a white, I mean a colored base for it. These pieces are going to go down like this. I think with this one, I'm going to do something a little bit different with this one because I want it to go see we got sunshine like little sun rays I right, focus in I'm not sure if that's focusing but those look like little sunshines so these two are like water and sky so I'm gonna put this one to the top so I am going to use my Stampin' Seal on this and I'm just going to pull one piece from the top to the bottom and I'm going to do the same thing with this piece. Did I do that? Yeah, I did it on the right side. Okay, get it to the edge. And up and I'm going to center this on here not quite you know what we're going to go with it the reason I say that this stuff is so strong once you put it down it's all she wrote so why don't we make this one going this way. Then it can look like we meant for it to be like that. So we, we have this side closer over here and this side closer over there. And we're going to grab a card base that is... I wonder how it would look on black. And we're going to do a big label there in the middle. Maybe another piece of cardstock. What would be really pretty might even be another piece of this. Something like that. We'll see. I'm going to go ahead and adhere these pieces down. So 
I'm going to put this one right about here. And then we're going to take this one and put it right about here. And now we'll, we'll decide what we're going to fill in there. So there's another card base made. Now we have this piece here. Now I think what I want to do is I want to put another piece of that gold behind here. And I think what I want, and this is that Mango Melody, I think what I want to do is I am going to use my my banner pick a punch and so I'm going to get that evened up in there about like so and pull it out that's what I was looking for and we're going to do the same thing with this piece What I'm gonna, what I like to do, I know it has a guide, but I just seems like I do much better if I bring it in and eyeball it from back here. For some reason, it's wanting to go wonky on me. There we go. Took me a minute, but I got it. Now, what I'm gonna do after I get these on here, I am gonna actually cut this down to make it the length that I want it. So I'm gonna cut another piece. This piece right here is one inch. This is three quarters. This is gonna be one and one fourth. So I am gonna bring this over to one and one fourth slice it and I want it to be just a tiny bit longer so I need it to be maybe four and a quarter we can always trim it back if it's if it's um, too long so now let's see if this punch will accommodate a piece this wide and if it don't you know what we can do we can always manipulate it in there just like that oh that didn't work too good for me tell you what we're going to do we have a little extra length here so i'm just going to take my scissors and i'm going to cut that off and because that's not quite, this was too wide for that punch, I'm going to grab one other punch that I like to use when I want to do an angle. And that's this one right here. This is the tailored tag punch. And this works really good because you can take any size piece and as long as you center it right there, you can get that on that one. So now what we want to do is we are going to put this here and then this piece here and I'm going to glue these down in the in the way that I want them to go. This time I am going to use my liquid glue. Let me move these punches out of my way. I love my punches, but they do take up a lot of room on your desk. So I usually try to make sure that I put those back where they belong. And I am going to take glue. I think I got a little clump on there. That will usually keep it from coming out. So that's just one of those things with liquid glue that happens. There we go. All right. 
So now I'm going to put this right where I want it on here and glue it down. This would probably have been a great place to use the silicone craft mat so I don't get glue on my on my table. Then on this piece I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to glue all the way up and then we are going to center this and I'm lining it from the bottom to the top. and press that down. And see what a beautiful little tag that gives you. And then once this dries, we can take our scissors and just come right across there and cut that off, just like that. Now, if you want to have like a little cap over that, you could very easily fold a piece of cardstock and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's just take this and let's cut it at a half an inch. I'll tell you what, let's score it at a quarter inch first. Then we're going to move it over to that half an inch and we're going to cut it. And then we're going to fold it and we can actually cap that top just by putting a piece of, of the paper over top of that. See how attractive that makes it? It just gives it a nice finished look. These are just little detail things that you can do in your crafting that can make a difference in the outcome of your project. So I'm gonna put glue on both sides of that and then I'm just gonna lay that in to that score line, nice and even. Fold it over and I give it a good press. And here would be a good time if you got something heavy that you could sit on that. A stamp block usually works really well. I like to grab one of the larger ones if I'm using it as a weight. So let's grab a. I'm wondering. I want the flirty flamingo. I'm going to grab a piece of flirty flamingo. And maybe another white card base. I think I'm going to cut this off at about four inches. And I also think I want to emboss this piece. I think it would look really pretty embossed on here. So I'm going to grab my stamp and cut and emboss machine. I'm going to grab my folders and see which one I want to use. I don't know if painted textures is still in our catalog or not. I need to check. I try not to use any products that aren't current. So let's look in our embossing folders. Painted Textures is still available. I thought it was, but I wanted to make sure before I actually brought it um, in to use. So we're going to grab our stamp and cut and emboss machine. <coughs> I am 
going to lay this right in the middle, close it down. I am going to grab my number one plate, which is the base plate. And I'm going to lay my embossing folder on that plate and then we're going to grab, because this is a 3D embossing folder, I'm going to grab my number four plate and lay that over top of it. And that's the only sandwich you need for your, any of your thick embossing folders. Roll that through. Just like that. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at the detail on that. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm. It looks like somebody painted it with a paintbrush. So let's put this back here. Bring our card piece in. And I think I'm going to take it up to the top. And I think the reason I want to do that is I want this to go right here. We're going to do a sentiment there and I think I might put a strip of, do I have any more strips? I don't think I did. Hmm. Maybe a strip of the gold right down here. I want it to be the same width as this, which is four inches. So let's go ahead and cut this to four. And, and you can see that I am absolutely designing on the fly. I'm just, is this is just a work in progress. I don't have a rhyme or a reason. I'm going to cut that off to one inch. I think one inch will be sufficient. Oh yeah. One inch will be plenty. I'm thinking I might want to do that in the embossing folder as well. Hmm, maybe not. I like the I like the different textures on the card. What I do want to do is adhere that together just like that. So we're going to use some more liquid glue. And what I'm going to do is just run a bead. Let me grab my silicone craft mat. And I'm just going to run a bead of glue right across the bottom. Just like that. And then I'm just going to bring this in and set it into that glue. Like so. And then on this side, I just want to clean up that ooze of glue. We're going to put a piece of ribbon across, across there. This would really give us um, a lot of different detail in this piece if we did this. How pretty is that? So I'm going to go ahead and cut off a piece of this about that much and we are going to turn this over and I'm going to use stamp and seal and I'm going to put a piece here and a piece here didn't come up over that so I'm going to do another little piece there I just want to make sure I got enough to catch it And I'm evening it up so that I'm going to lift that up and wrap it just like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. 
and you don't want to stretch it to where it's going to cause your cardstock to be warped but you do want it to be snug just like that and then to ensure that that is going to stay down I am going to grab a glue dot And I'm just going to put a glue dot right in the middle, right about here, just to ensure that that stays in place. And now this is ready to put onto our card base. Oh, I love that. Does that not dress that up? Isn't that pretty? So we are ready to put this piece on here. And I'm going to do glue because we got all of those little nooks and crannies from that embossing folder. So I'm going to come over to about there. And yes, this one is taking a little bit longer because I'm doing a lot of more extra stuff. And the reason I'm doing that on this one is I just wanted to show you that you can make your cards as simple or as elaborate as you like. It is totally up to you how much time you have to put in a card. And a lot of times it's who I'm making the card for. Um, I will usually, for family members, I will spend a lot of time for my stamping up community I, when i send a card out to any of y'all my customers or whatever i'll spend a little bit more time in cards that i make for you um, if it's a general card that i'm just sending um, maybe not quite as much time but i still take a lot of pride in what i do so now the front of this one is ready remember we are going to put sentiments on these but we're going to come back and do that all right, so we pulled out lace, we, um, we die cut, we embossed. We've done a little bit of everything on our cards so far. So now I want to get, I think I'm going to use this beautiful balmy blue for this one because that's a sunrise and how pretty is that going to be like that you don't have to use the colors that are coordinating you can um, or matching you can coordinate your colors and make your card what you want it to be I think I'm going to go back to my stamp and seal so I'm going to turn this over and making sure my stamp and seal is all the way to the edge and very lightly I'm pulling it down Need to put a little bit more right there. Make sure it's to the edge. Pull it down to the edge and pull it down. And now we're ready to adhere this onto here. And we're gonna do it, I'll tell you what, let's put this piece on. The, I got this all on, making sure that my glue is pushed back. Now I'm going to go ahead and sit this in nice and straight. And then we're going to take this piece and we're going to angle it just like that. That one is done. Now for this one. Have this flirty flamingo and I think this is going to be so pretty just glue it down just like that we can put some other embellishments on it and um, this will make this a really pretty piece so again stamp and seal little extra hanging over right there so I am going to 
press this down like that. You know what? <laughs> I'm loving this piece. Look how pretty that is. Ooh. I think I like this side better. I think I'm going to go with that. I really do love that. And I want to do it like that. So, here we go. And then we are going to put it down just like so. I ah, love these cards. They are so pretty. Now we have one more. We have this one. And we need the... Magenta Madness. Let's get a piece of magenta. I got scraps of Melon Mondo. There's Magenta Madness. Oh. You know, I like that crushed curry against this much better. Maybe we're going to do this one. Hmm. Let's let's regroup. <laughs> I'm always changing my mind, y'all. Y'all know that about me. I'm going to get a piece of Misty Moonlight. And I'm going to just glue that in just like that. So let's do our Stamp and Seal Plus. Then we're going to glue this on top of this. And Bella is down here just to snore, not to storm, y'all. Need to come over a little bit further. Not that's a little too much. Anytime you pull up your paper, I would suggest to go back and really iron it out. If you have some corners that are lifting, take your liquid glue and just go up under the edge with a little drop. Just like that and push that out. Just to make sure that nothing's lifting off of your card. And again, I cannot emphasize how important it is just to really iron everything down. I'm going to use liquid glue for this. I think because we're dealing with cardstock with a piece of pattern paper over it, we're not going to see the glue coming through. And that's when I like to use my glue. If I'm using something that's a little flimsier, Bella. This is going to be beautiful with a white sentiment on it. And I'm going to iron that down. And we are going to grab. I do not have a. I do. I do. I do. I have a misty moonlight. Haha. <laughs> I think I'm going to put this one on like this. Let's see. We've got one, two. Oh, that one's landscape. That's portrait. That's portrait. That's landscape. This is going to determine. Okay, this is landscape. This is landscape. This could also be portrait, but I like it landscape. This is portrait. Portrait. 
This could be portrait or landscape. We're going to go portrait. Portrait, landscape, and landscape. Okay, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We're in a tie. So I don't think this one matters. Hmm, I'm going to go portrait. So again, I'm going to use liquid glue. My ever famous circular motions. There we go. And like I said, if we decide we want to turn it, there's nothing that says we can't turn that. Mm -hmm.